Hello everyone and welcome back to our FPS RPG series. Today we are starting chapter 2 and that's going to be handling the shooting mechanics in our game. So we're going to do this as a shooting mechanics and we'll do animation stuff with guns and things like that uh, later on. So eventually we'll get to the point where we can customise our guns and e equip loot onto our guns using equipment systems. Uh, but that will come in a separate chapter. In this chapter I want to really focus on just the functionality of guns and how we can get them shooting and calculating damage that they're dealing and so forth. So we're going to start off by just simply just using the current gun that comes with the FPS uh, project. Okay, and we're going to turn it into a hit scan gun, a separate object, and then go through the process of how we actually calculate the numbers um, when we're dealing damage with enemies. So the first thing we're going to do is go into our first person blueprint. And we're going to clean this up because we don't want our gun on our character. Now, the best way to handle guns, uh, I feel, is to have guns as a separate blueprint. Because the gun is going to have its own behaviors, its own sort of uh, controls and so forth, separate from the player character. And the player character is going to be persistent in the world at all times. And they, they'll be just simply switching between different guns. So, we're going to get rid of all the shooting stuff that's inside of our player character here. So let's get rid of the spawn projectile stuff. And, and then I'm going to, I'm not, might as well, whilst I'm here, sorry, get rid of the uh, VR stuff because we're not doing VR. I'll get rid of that. And um, we can go into the viewport now. And we're going to get rid of the motion controllers and the VR gun and the VR marker. Don't need that. And now with the gun here, what we're going to do is we're going to remove the FP gun and the sphere. We're going to keep the arms on here. And the reason why we're doing that is because um, when we get to doing the animation side of things with our guns, we're going to make use IKs to place the hands in the correct position. So we're not going to worry too much about the positioning of the hands and making sure it's all accurate in this chapter. As I said that will come later on. So the arms will stay here and we'll be animating the guns to do the kickback and so forth because the guns are going to be unique. It's the hands that are going to be trying to hold on to it. So Currently in the FPS project, what they do is they have the arms animate and the gun goes with the arms. We're going to make the gun animate and the arms go with the gun. But again, we'll do that in another chapter. So that would do for here. Um, we get an error when we compile and that's because in their construction script, they're using the mesh 2P to attach the gun to the grip of the hand. So we can get rid of that. We don't want that either. And that will compile just fine now. Okay. So... Looking at our um, variables here as well, um, we can keep, actually we'll keep all these variables in, we're, we're not too fast if we keep them or not, uh, but we won't need things like head mounted displays or anything like that, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, so now we've cleaned that up, we're going to go into creating our gun asset. So I'm going to go into my content folder here, create a new folder, talk about guns, and in our guns we're going to create a new blueprint class. And this is going to be a parent class where all weapons and guns will come from. So choose actor. And we're going to choose, uh, type in the name of um, weapon underscore parent. Okay. And this is going to be the parent class that handles all the common uh, common features of all the weapons and their uh, uh, functions and, uh, and, and variables. So go into your weapon parent. And in here, we're going to have set up our custom events and our functions that all the weapons are going to share. So all the weapons in this design of this game are going to have a primary fire and aim down sights. Okay, so we're going to go into our uh, functions here. No, sorry, we're going to go into our uh, events. We'll clear the table there, and we'll do a custom event. And we're going to have uh, several here. We're going to have start shooting, which will be called when you want to start the shooting of the gun. We're going to do another one called stop shooting, which does what you think it does, stops the shooting. And again, will be called when you want to stop shooting the gun. So when you hold down the trigger, we want to call this one. And when we let go of the trigger, we want to do this one. So other than those events, we're also going to have functions. Now the functions on the left hand side here, we're going to click on new function. And this one's going to have fire bullet. And if you want to know why I want to use this as a function rather than as a, an event, the way to think of it is, uh, think of cause and effect, okay? These are the causes, and the fire bullet is the effect. So start shooting is going to cause this effect, 
okay so uh the other event here we could do um for another function uh sorry as a reload so new function reload like so and that should do it for now we may have to come up some more later on uh oh we aim down sites as well we'll do custom event aim down sites okay so now we're going to go into our variables and set up our variables for our gun here so the first thing we're going to do is ammo and that's going to be a integer because you can't have half a bullet for example so your ammo will be an integer there um this will be next one will be clip size and that'll be how much ammo your gun can actually store and hold okay uh in, in each clip and next one we're going to do is um ammo to uh, max or total so ammo is going to be the amount of ammo that's currently in loaded into the weapon the clip size is the amount of uh, ammo can go into a single clip and the ammo total is how much ammo you have in total on your person. Now we're also going to have a few other things as well. So we're going to do another variable. And we'll do this one as damage. Okay. And the damage is how much uh, each bullet is going to cause damage wise. And that's going to be a float. Then we're going to have um, accuracy. And this is how uh, how accurate your gun is going to be. And this value can change over time. So when we do aim down sights as well, um, this uh, value will change and become a lot more accurate. Okay, so the idea is, is that the closer it gets to one, the more accurate the gun is going to be. Next is going to be fire rate. And this is the amount of ammo it can expel from the gun uh, over one second. And all these three things here will be used as uh, part of an algorithm to calculate the amount of damage that needs to be done. Okay, more on that later. So now we're going to go into the components up the top here. The first component we're going to add is the mesh itself. So let's go to viewport and let's add a mesh. So I'm going to do a skeletal mesh. Now the reason why we're going to do a skeletal mesh is because in time our gun is going to be a animated mesh that's going to have moving parts. And those parts can also be swapped out for other parts when you get new equipment, uh, either from mob drop drops or from shops. So we're going to do a skeletal mesh, and this will be the gun mesh. And by default, we're going to just set up the FP gun that comes with the uh, project. And with the gun, we're going to open this up on the right hand side, double click on the skeletal mesh. Now on the gun here, we're going to identify where the bullet comes out of, okay? Even though it might be obvious to you, the computer doesn't actually know where the bullet comes from. So go to your skeleton tree, and we're gonna make, um, well, it, it, it's already done it, you can see here. If I click on muzzle, you can see we've got a socket already done for muzzle. So if you're using your own gun, you need to make a new socket. So right click on the bone, and this one called grip bone, and go add socket, okay? Uh, this one's already got one here called muzzle, so that's one we're going to be using for our um, our shooting. Next, we're going to look at our weapon parent again. So we don't need to do like a sphere or a scene component here. We can just use that just fine. Okay, so um, that's looking quite good so far. So let's now attach this to our player character. So let's go back to our player character. And just test this out. Okay, so the player character is going to hold this gun. So we're going to right click on the mesh, or sorry, left click on the mesh 2P, go add component, and we're going to call the child actor. And this basically adds another actor into this thing as a component, and we're going to attach it to the hands here. So it will call this one um, held gun. Okay, and the held gun we want to attach to the mesh 2P. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click on my mesh 2P here and open up the hands and we're going to find the grip point which is there. Okay, so it's called grip point 
and remember the spelling correctly including the capital letters because what we're going to do here is actually we don't need to remember that because I think they've changed it so you can actually just search for it if we go to our held gun go to parent socket and click on the little magnifying glass you can choose yes grip point from the list and that will now move that to that grip point in that hand there now with it selected if I go over to where it says child actor class I can choose the um, weapon parent actor and there you go and it attaches it to the hand kind of as I said later on we'll fix it so the IK of the hands attached to the gun correctly now the reason why I have to use IK is because we're going to have various different types of guns different types of parts so your hands need to adjust and animate with the different types of guns so we're going to do it with IKs there okay so um, that will do there we've got the child actor class set up there and if I walk around now, you should see it in perfect view. Okay, and because the hands are animated with the walk, the gun will move with the hands because it's attached to that socket. Okay, so now we've got the gun set up, the we well, the weapon parent at least anyway. Um, we're also going to have to identify what type of gun this is. Um, because we're going to have different types of weapons that do different behaviors. Okay, so um, what we're going to be doing is making a child of this one for those sub types. So let's close that and right click on weapon parent and go create child blueprint class. And we're going to call this one simply a um, assault rifle. And we'll leave it as assault rifle. Okay. And assault rifle we'll leave as this one. Okay, and you can see it's inherited all the gun mesh. And if I click on the self bit up top here, you can see we've got ammo, clip sized, ammo total, damage, accuracy, and fire rate. And so for each one of these, you can change this value based on the gun you're building. So let's now add that to our player character and change our parent here to assault rifle. Good. Okay, so in our game, we're also going to have a secondary weapon. So this weapon is going to uh, going to hold two weapons at a time. One would be sort of like side armed, and you can be able to switch between the two on the fly quite easily. So the easiest way of doing that is we're going to make a second weapon. So again, click on Mesh Two P, go Add Component, and choose Child Actor. And this would be side or, or second gun. Sorry, we'll do um. No, uh, we'll do side. No, no, side arm. We'll do second gun. Yeah, second gun. And let's change held gun to first gun, just so it makes more sense. Okay, so side gun, second gun, and side, uh, first gun. So second gun, we're going to choose assault rifle as well. But you can see we're not attaching it to the bone or anything like that. We've got it right up here. So we can position that wherever we want, um, but we're going to leave it at zero zero zero. Um, it doesn't really matter where it goes because it's going to be invisible. So we're going to go to second gun and change its visibility from visible to off. So when we switch guns, we're going to make this one switch places with this one, and um, by simply just telling it which socket it's attached to. Okay, so. That way, all the data from the first gun stays on the first gun, all the data from the second gun stays on the second gun, and you don't have to worry about switching around a lot of stuff. Obviously, when you go into your menu and change which gun you have in your menu, that will reset all the, all the stats and figures of that gun anyway, so it's not a big problem. Okay, so you can hit save, and we are done here. So now we need to set up our input. So go to edit, and go to project settings, and look for inputs. And in here, we're going to add a couple of things. So we've got fire for shooting a gun, which is fine. We're also going to add the aim down sights one as well. So add a new action mapping. And this is going to be um, aim down sights. And this is going to be mapped to my right click, uh, sorry, right mouse button. And also gamepad uh, left shoulder, uh, left so left trigger there you go and we'll leave that as is we're also going to do a run as well so we'll do another action mapping here and we'll do sprint and 
that's going to be attached to left control. And also gamepad left thumbstick uh, button. Where was it? Left thumbstick. There you go. Okay, so we've got sprint, aim down sights. We also need crouch as well. So another action mapping here for crouching. Because we're also going to add a modifier later on. Where the damage is also changed, uh, the accuracy increases when you are crouched. So that will then affect the amount of damage you can deal. So crouch is going to become uh, left shift. And that will be the right thumb pick button. Actually, no, we'll do, we'll do Call of Duty style, we'll do uh, face button um, right. Okay, so that's that all set up. Okay, so um, what we're going to do is we're going to stop that there, and in the next part, we'll go into the actual hooking up those inputs to the gun and triggering those events and functions that we set up earlier in our gun. If you want to watch that next part right now, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, where a donation of just $1 will get access to that video plus many, many others. Big shout out and thank you to all of my patrons for their continued support. Uh, it's been amazing to see the support that's come through for the channel and this, in particular this series. So thank you so much for uh, joining and supporting me. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And uh, make sure you hit that like. And if you have any suggestions or have questions, leave a comment below and I'll happily check them out. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.